here. I'm going to have a nice break now. Please stand. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And it's nice to hear some voices for change after a long haul of uh, standing here and imagining cardboard cutouts or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it's good to see real bodies. But welcome to our guests and visitors online as well. Um, and wherever you are, we're just glad you're here with us today. Today marks the, sat the Sunday before Palm Sunday in depending on who's counting, it could be the last Sunday of Lent or the penultimate Sunday of Lent. Um, in our gospel today, you're going to hear this, uh, we continue on with John in this next to the last discourse of Jesus, the enigmatic uh, answer to the meaning of his crucifixion and ascension and so forth. And we could easily take an entire college semester on those four or five sentences of Jesus called his uh, uh, final discourse. Actually, there's a farewell discourse after this. But uh, we won't do that. We're going to focus on something pretty basic, and that's just seeing Jesus. So I can say spring started yesterday. Happy spring. And without further ado, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand.
Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Amen. Hear the commandments of God to his people. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of bondage. You shall have no other gods but me. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not make for yourself any idol. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not invoke with malice the name of the Lord your God. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Honor your father and your mother. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit murder. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit adultery. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not steal. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not be a false witness. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Amen. Lord, have mercy. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. <clears throat> Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done. And and what we have, have left undone. Undone. We, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. Amen. 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 Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins who are Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed, where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated to hear the word of God. reading from the book of Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant, covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. The covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord, I will put my law within them and will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read responsively, if I have verse, Psalm 51. 
Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness. And cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions. And my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned. And done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak. And upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth. A sinner, a sinner from, from my, my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me, and, and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin, and I shall be pure. Wash me, and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness, that, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all of them. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. The second reading is from Hebrews, a letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Christ Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival, some were Greeks. They said to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, the voice that is, has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of the world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. This is the gospel of the Lord. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Create in us clean hearts, O Lord, and take not your Holy Spirit from us. Amen. Please be seated. God works in wondrous, sometimes strange, bewildering ways. So yesterday I had to go out of town to a meeting, and at that meeting I ran into three people. Two were couples, and one was a single who had attended Grace in the last 10 years and decided to go to another church, not far from here, another Episcopal church. And that was enough with a slightly upset stomach. I spent most of the night churning over, you know, all the what ifs. So this morning coming in here, there was a young woman out here who had clearly spent the night outside uh, sitting at the fountain, and we chatted for a couple of minutes, and and um, she said something to the effect of, thank you for not judging me. And I replied back, I said, we leave the judgment business to God. I said, I'm just glad you're here, and I welcomed her to come to the service. And, and she said, um, the street people that I know are glad this church is here. So, I won't worry about the three that are going to another Episcopal church. God bless them. Now, throughout the Roman Empire, the time of Jesus, the the current year in the Romans' mind then was always based on the year of the founding of the city of Rome, 750 years before the birth of Jesus. And by the time of this Passover mentioned in John, the Romans would have dated it around AUC 782, and I won't spare you the Latin for AUC, but Jews had already been coming to Jerusalem to celebrate Passover 
for 550 years or more since the rebuilding of the Second Temple. The Romans respected the Jewish religion because of its antiquity. They brutally suppressed just about all the other religions they encountered. And I suspect that after five centuries of repeated rituals and pilgrimages to Jerusalem from all over, there were many, many secular Jews who just loved the great party and the time to see their old friends from all over. Today, I think we would call them religious but not spiritual. John's gospel refers to them as, quote, Greeks coming to the Passover to worship. These were fully Hellenized, Greek-speaking Jews who ran successful businesses all over the empire from North Africa to Gaul, which is modern France, and Asia Minor, which is modern Turkey. Their Greek language was the language of the empire. Their Jewish roots gave them instant business connections and family connections everywhere. And about one person in six throughout the Roman Empire, one sixth was Jewish at the time. They were coming to the center of their religion, to Jerusalem to repeat old familiar rituals, seeing friends and relatives. A few of them approach one disciple of Jesus with a Greek name, Philip, who was from a Greek city in Galilee named Bethsaida. Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Interesting, we don't catch this. The word used for sir, Kyrie, in that ancient Koine Greek, is also translated as Lord. We hear it in the Kyrie eleison this morning. It's translated as Lord in English only in reference to Jesus. There is a subtle clue in this double reference, the use of sir throughout, that you'll find out at the end today. But don't we... Don't we all wish to see Jesus? In May and June, I will have cataract surgery in both eyes, one at a time. And I know many people say this laser surgery is no big deal, and it improves vision tremendously. And I, I now print my sermons out in big type. And last week, I got lost several times. It's dark in the pulpit. I cannot see well, and we're going to fix both problems soon. But even though the outcome statistics are good, that does not completely erase my fear. Having lost and coped with the loss of one important sensory organ already, the very small prospect of losing even one eye terrifies me. So it's not clear whether the Greek-speaking Jews who had traveled to Jerusalem for the Passover ever got their wish. In fact, Jesus goes into hiding and is the very next time he's seen in public is on a cross. Doubtless, they had heard about the prophet from Galilee who had raised someone from the dead who had been in a stinking tomb for four days, knowing that the Passover had turned into big business for the Jerusalem temple, changing money, including people in the town running lodging businesses, kind of an ancient Airbnb, if you will. The shop selling trinkets to the pilgrims, the various, there, there were non-Jewish, what I call the religious nutcakes, standing on just about every corner of Jerusalem, Rome, and Athens, pr pronouncing the end of the world for various reasons. And they're all ignored just like we do today. They're considered crazy people. So I've often thought of the scene of Jerusalem at the sign of the Passover as much more carnival and less solemn religious assembly. Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Reminds me of a question we once asked when we landed in Cayman Island. We had heard about and we wanted to see this limbo guy who could go under a flaming bar supported by two two-liter Coke bottles, one on each side. And, guy would go, and we saw it, but that's entertainment and carnival, not solemn assembly. But Jesus converts this carnival atmosphere to deeply spiritual, telling them, essentially, you won't see me for a few more days. And when you do see me, you will see a tortured, flogged, and crucified man you will not even recognize. 
I have shown you what it means to glorify God, that you give yourself so that others may live. I will give myself so that you may live. You'll see me, I promise you. John's gospel, beginning to end, is all about the real presence of Christ and the power of sacrificial love. We complete the 50 days of Easter ending with the Ascension and the Pentecost with the promise that the Holy Spirit is with us and somehow Jesus is too. Jesus gives us the grapevines and the branches metaphor with the idea that we are the branches onto his vine. We are part of Jesus and he is part of us. John's gospel also contains the most astonishing words from Jesus in the entire Bible. He tells us that because we are part of him, we will do, quote, greater things than he. Greater things than he did. Did you hear that? You will do greater things than Jesus. One more time in case you missed it. Christ is in you and you will do greater things. That's not mind-blowing. I don't know what is. So on the streets of Athens today, you will hear respectful conversations from a subordinate working at a hero stand to his male boss, his or her male boss. They will say, Kiri, sir. That's the modern Greek pronunciation. From a child to an adult male, they will say, Kiri, sir. The same word was used at the time of Christ pronounced Kyrie, sir. The same word used to address Jesus and adult males in this manner, sir, is the only in the English translation of all the Bibles where a distinction is made and they refer to Jesus as Lord instead of sir. Spanish, I think, has the same kind of usage. Jesus is referred to as Señor Jesucristo, Senor is a respectful form to address any adult male. Senor, queríamos a ver Jesús. Sir, we wish to seek Jesus. Now, if disaster strikes and the lights go out for me, or I should say when, I will be grateful. Not for the disaster, whatever it is, or a possible loss of vision, but I will be grateful because over the years, I have been blessed to see Jesus. I've looked at you, and I've seen Jesus in your hearts, in your eyes, and in your actions. So I encourage you, look around, and you'll see Jesus. Let us stand and profess our faith in the Nicene Creed. We believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
the prayers of the people. Bound together in Christ in the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us pray with one heart and mind to God our Father. We pray for peace from things that separate us from one another and for our salvation. Lord, have mercy. We pray for the peace of the whole world and for the welfare of the holy churches of God, especially St. David's Oklahoma City, St. Augustine of Canterbury, Montevideo, Uruguay, the Diocese of Idaho, the Church of the Province of the Indian Ocean. We pray for this holy gathering and for those who enter with faith, reverence, and fear of God. Lord, have mercy. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, Paulson, our bishop, Bob and Tom, our clergy, Tim and Pat, our wins, Vestry, delegates, all who minister in Christ, and for all the holy people of God. Lord, have mercy. We pray for the world and its leaders, our nation and its people. We pray for our leaders, especially Joe, Joe our president, president, Kamala, our vice president, Mark Wayne, our congressman, James and Jim, our senators, Kevin, our governor, and Marlon, our mayor. Lord, have mercy. We pray for prisoners, for the oppressed, all those in need or suffering, especially Barbara and family, the Blackwell family, Brad, the Brewer family, James and Shirley, Judy, Sherry, B, Ethan, Linda, John, Angie, Brian, Glenn, Dante, Marilyn, Gary, Anne, Connie, Jan, Cliff, Esther, Anne, Ronald, Michael, Sheila, JJ, Marley, Betty, Carl, all those affected by the pandemic, all the frontline workers involved with patient care, all first responders, law enforcement, all fire and safety personnel, all United, United States, States military serving at home and abroad, abroad. postal workers, workers, and those, those whose suffering is known only to God. We pray for those who have died. We pray for ourselves, our families, and those we love. We pray for those in our parish, especially Jacqueline, John, John Sharon, Sharon, Matthew, and Sarah, and also all those who are traveling. Lord, Lord have mercy. Remembering our most blessed Mary and all the saints, let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ. To you, O Lord. Lord. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. <laughs> Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Peace the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace, Norm. Peace, Bradley's. Peace. I'm sorry I didn't have my mask on on the gospel. I got. I'm worried about it. Mine kept slipping. I've been vaccinated. Peace, Peace, Peace I've got my first shot. Peace, Cedric. Yeah. You know the Ethiopians and look at the stars and tell you the exact date of Easter. I'm not going to say that they must have been one of them wisely. When did your surgery? What? What date did your surgery? Um, God, when is it? It's. I'll ask the boy. It's in May. I've got to look at my phone. <laughs> I've, had, I've had it when it's last month. Last month. Yeah, I heard. Uh, uh, Try it. Try it. Yeah. And, 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 I, and I can, I don't need not to see the TV. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's still. <laughs> Wings. <laughs> Peace. Well, I won't bore you with astrophysics or anything, but 
John and I were talking about spring, and she thought today was the first day of spring. I said, well, it might be tomorrow or it could be yesterday. It turns out yesterday. So uh, this, the various seasonal dates can vary plus or minus a day from the 21st. But happy spring, everybody. <laughs> Next Sunday is Palm Sunday. <coughs> and I think we'll have a grand procession. All glory, laud, and honor, all that good stuff, which drives the organist crazy. Um, have you ever seen a full choir go out on Palm Sunday singing all glory, laud, and honor, and they come back in, and they're a half step low? Every year for eight years. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean. <laughs> yep. So, um, anyway, um, and then, of course, April 4th is Easter. Um, during Holy Week, we will have Wednesday night tenebrae service, a service of shadows, and then Thursday is at 6.30. Or so, six. Monday, six. Thursday. Uh, six. six or 6.30? Six. Six. Thank you. Um, six o'clock. Tenebrae Wednesday, Monday, Thursday, Thursday night, and Good Friday on Friday, um, all at the same time. So, and then... Easter, I think there was some advertisement I saw somewhere. It said 7 a.m. service. Um, uh, we normally do the sunrise service. Yeah, I was kind of hoping we could just do the 8.30, but all right. I think You're we're the gonna, man. We're going to punt, do it at 8.30. I'm a wuss. Um, <laughs> the, there's been some movement by people wanting 8.30 services. The, main reason I'm delaying that until May is we have the bishop coming and then two weeks later the canon from the diocese is coming and I really hate to make them get up at Odark 30 to drive here for a service that'll have four to eight people so uh, I'd rather keep us all together let's put our best foot forward so we're going to have four 830 services in May so that's and then we'll take the summer uh, schedule. BJ? Uh, the only thing, excuse me, the only thing I have is we have, don't forget lilies. We are going to have lilies on the altar. And uh, that the sheet is in your bulletin. And the bishop's visit, the bishop will be here the Sunday after Easter. Next right. week is Palm Sunday. And vestry meeting tomorrow night. 6.30 Zoom meeting. Um, please be in attendance if you're vestry and we, because we will have several things to talk about. The agenda and reports and such should go out they tomorrow. Should have gone out Friday, but. All already have gone out, so check your emails. Okay. Any birthdays, anniversaries, other annual observances? Do not neglect to do good and share what you have for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Uh-oh. Tell them that we have a giving plate in the back that we're not going to oh. actually pass the plate. Oh, yeah. Part of the, even though uh, spread of COVID by touch is probably not a big issue, um, we're still following the guidelines. So I thought there was a giving plate up here, too. There was. It vanished. Somebody, somebody needed it more. Um, there's supposed to be a, an alms plate up here and one in the back, and you may uh, deposit your giving either location. Uh-oh. Here it comes. I heard a confession, too. Um, there it is. Okay, so the reason for that is simply so that we don't pass the plate and share all those things on your hands, which, never mind. Do not neglect to do good and share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God.
gracious God, we offer you these gifts which you have given us, this bread and this wine. With them we offer ourselves, our lives, and our work to become, through your Holy Spirit, a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace, we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died and for us and rose again. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Thanks to you, O Lord, O God, for this goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you have sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever.
are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. I neglected to make earlier was that we will have coffee hour in the courtyard 
for all the requirements and so forth, but there's freshly brewed coffee and some goodies and so forth. You can get them on this north facing door of the parish hall. So please join us. And turn to page 11 and let us pray with the prayer of thanksgiving at the end. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. You have fed us the spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. May God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and always. Amen. Thanks, Thanks to God. God.